Andy Purewell for Boxing Social. I'm delighted to be joined by WBA Super Flyweight World Champion Cal Yafai. Cal, how are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm very good. It's good to hear. Down here today, we've just had your fight announced with Israel Gonzalez. Just talk to me about that. Um, fighting Israel Gonzalez on the 24th of November in Monaco, um, defending my world title. I know, you, obviously, you're fighting out in Monaco. <clears throat> we've previously spoken about how you, you see your future and your career heading out into states or into America. So how come the opportunity to fight in France uh, appeared? Um, it was just the opportunity. I was, I was given this opportunity. Um, there was talks of fighting in Las Vegas and then Atlantic City and then Monaco, which was it worked out, um, you know, all the details behind the scenes worked out to be better to fight in Monaco. Um, so, yeah, it was, it, it's, it was good money, so... So, t talk to me about that then. So, how come you've decided against going out to the States? And obviously, over in America, the Superflies are very well promoted and looked upon. Um, like I said, it's close to home. Um, same money. So, it just, made, it just made sense. Everything made sense just to fight close to home. Um, next year, um, hopefully fight three times and fight all, all of those, those fights in America. I was going to say, do you still foresee your future being out in America or at least the majority of it from this point onwards being out there? Yeah, most definitely, most definitely. And talk to me about you know, Israel Gonzalez. I can't say lock on. I know much about him. I've, I've tried to find bits and pieces out about him, so, but I don't really know much about his style and what he might bring. So how come you've decided to take him on? Um, this is the opponent that was given to me, so that's, that's what I'll do. Whatever my team decides, I'll, I'll go with that. Um, He's, a, he's another tough Mexican. Boxed uh, German on Carhas in, in early this year. Got beat in 10 rounds. Um, so, you know, I just, just got to keep my on the ball, deal with this guy and, um, and move on to hopefully some big fights next year. So what do you know about him in terms of his style and what he's going to bring? You know, I know very much so that you're comfortable boxing on the back foot, but you can also come on the front foot. Yeah. So which type of style do you ex anticipate having to use most? Um, a bit of both, really. Mix it up. Um, these Mexicans, you know, they're calm. They come to give it. Um, this is their world title shot, so, you know, I just got to be on the ball and do what I do. I, I kind of measure them up as the fight goes on. Um, but, yeah, I look to break this guy down and um, and take him apart. Now, obviously, you've just mentioned he fought Ankarjas. Will you or have you had a chance to watch that fight? Yeah, I've watched that fight, yeah. And what did you make of it? Um, it was pretty straightforward for Ankara, so um, yeah, I've seen, I've seen what he done to him, so I think I can do better. So I was about to say, you know, knowing that he's got him out there in 10 rounds, we've spoken about his numerous occasions on and off camera that you want to unify, you want to have them big fights. Do you feel a bit of pressure knowing that because Ankara just got him out in 10 rounds that you have to either try and match or better that performance? No, no, I'm on my own, on my own path. You know, I'm doing my own thing. My my um, my team, my promoter, um, that you know they've got the the plan for me, and and I leave that to them. But the fighting side, I'll just do what I've got to do, what works best for me, make it as easy as possible, um, and take as as less stick as possible in the fights. Which I, you know, I never I never stuck to that in my last fight. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll be doing that. I mean, provided you come through with another win, it's going to be two years in December that you actually won your world title. When you first won it, what was what was you thinking in your head with regards to looking to unify, looking to them big fights? Did you think one of them would have come sooner than what it may do? Um, possibly, yeah. But at the same time, I knew, I, I knew the plan that my team had for me. So I knew that I'd have three or four, you know, defences and, and move on to big things. Um, it's all about. It's just. It's boxing's a business, so you know if these if these opportunity if these fights are what I have to get through to get to unification fights. That so be it. That's that's what I've got to do. Um, as long as as long as I'm staying focused, working hard behind the scenes, always improving, and um, and making good money on on the way up, then um, so be it. You've just mentioned you know, staying focused. Because you've got that drawing, that ambition to eventually unify, to have them big fights, 
does it maybe at all become a little frustrating when you don't get them as soon as what you might have liked? Um, it can be, but at the same time, I think everything happens for a reason. So I just think, like, I'm world champion. Um, I've been world champion for almost two years. In those two years, I've had three good defences. Um, I've made some good money. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm always improving. So, and the way I think of it is, I haven't really took any stick in my career. So, I've still, I've took hardly any punishment, and I've still got a long time in my career to go. Now, talk to me as well about these three fights which you have lined up for next year. In terms of when do you see these planning out for the months of the year? If you used to fight three times, and what opponents have you looked at? I know Roman Gonzalez will be one which will come up because he's your mandatory. So, what, what are the the situations there? Um, I'm not sure yet, but I know the, I know I'll be in some big fights next year. I have to be. Um, I, I think I, I think that there, there will be, especially you know fighting on on a big flat platform like the zone um, over in the states. I think you know it's t it's time to get involved in some in some big fights, and I'm ready for these big fights. Um, I'm, a, I'm I'm an experienced. After this fight, I'll be, I would add four world title defenses, um, and I'm not going to overlook this guy. You know, I've worked hard so far for, for this opponent, so I'm doing my thing behind the scenes. But at the same time, I know that there's some big fights ahead in the new year. So we'll see. We'll, see. we'll just get this fight out of the way and then we'll see what's, up, what's, what's available early next year. Is next year very much so, not necessarily make or break, but it's got to be a very big year for you to establish yourself as one of the best in the division and to show everyone that you are the, not just the best, but you are the business and you are the guy who's continued to say that you've wanted to prove that? Yeah, most definitely. I will do. I'll do that next year. No, no, no one needs to worry about that. I've just, I've, I'm the only person that's got to worry about what I'm doing. I'm the one that's getting in there. Um, this is my job. This is my career. Um, this is this is my business, so I know that I know that the fights will come next year, and um, I'm more than ready for those fights. I've seen your division, there aren't any unified champions. Why do you think it is that it seems to be a bit more difficult at the lower weight to to make unification fights? To be honest with you, I couldn't tell you, but you know, it's 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 just a you know, it's a good division to be in. Three, there's three, there's three of us that are world champions. There's one vacant title. Um, and you know we're we're all good champions. Um, it's just the timing of things, obviously. You know, trying to get these these big fights. Um, so for this for this fight, I put, you know, I couldn't fight the guys like Joe and and Garhas. They they didn't want they didn't want to know about that fight, and they ended up fighting a guy that he he drew with last month. Um, wrong was I fought last month, but well, this month, sorry, a couple of weeks ago. Um, so they're the only two champions out there to make unification fights with. What did you make of both of those fights? Um, Rung Versailles was typical, done what he needed to do, does what he normally does. Um, his opponent was, was tough. He was limited but tough. Um, he scored two knockdowns <laughs> but didn't get them in Thailand. Um, but it was, it, was an, it was a typical Rung Versailles performance. Strong, bullish. Um, and and Carhas was I never got to see the fight, but I heard it, it wasn't it wasn't great. He got a draw against a guy he should have beat very easily. Now moving on to other boxing matters and what's going on on the scene at the minute. Uh, today we've seen well I'll say today uh, Derek Chisora uh, signing up with David Hay. You know what are your thoughts on that? It's come out of the blue. It's a bit of a weird one. Um, these guys, these guys fought a, couple, a few years ago, so yeah, it's weird how some, you can get knocked out by someone and then you sign them as you you get signed with them as your manager. Boxing for you, this is boxing. Anything, anything's possible. I mean, I don't know the finer details of it with regards to if he's gonna be still fighting under Eddie or if he's fighting under Haymaker and Ringstar. I'm not quite sure how it's gonna work out. Obviously, we are talk about making the Dillian White fight in December. If it is a matter of his just on with David, do you think it's going to be a bit more difficult to make that Dillian fight? I'm not too sure, to be honest. Um, I think if the, fight need, if the fight wants to be made, if they both want the fight, I'm sure it will be made. But, yeah, I, I'm sure it will be made, and I'm uh, looking forward to that one. 
And another talking point which came out towards uh, the middle of last week, uh, the Calm Brook stuff about apparently you know, 147 has been agreed, but Amir doesn't want the, you know, he wants, sorry, the £10 rehydration limit put into place. What are your thoughts on that? Um, bit, sh bit shit, really. They just need to get it on. So, he's agreed to come down to White White. Let's get it on, and it? it's gone on too long, man. It's, it's, just sign the contract. I'm sure there'll be loads of money there, and I'm sure they can both just finally get it on. It just needs to happen. It needs to happen soon. It ain't gonna happen like it. But if it don't happen early next year, then there's no point. Is it for which just continues to lose a bit of interest every week because it hasn't been made and people are still waiting for it? Possibly, yeah. It just it just needs to happen. Just let's get it done, man. I know I know Eddie wants to get it done as well, so. Um, but it's hard, obviously. There's two fighters, and they all want, you want to get the the best deal possible. But um, yeah, I, I hope it can get done. I hope it can get done soon. It's just it's just a fight that everybody wants to see. How much of a difference do you think that ten pound rehydration limit would make? Do you think it's going to make a significant difference for Cal? Um, yeah, I think so. It's, it's you know it's, it's, it's when you when it when you're making the weight and it's hard that that you know it's hard to try and stand that ten pound. So I think for Cal, that kit staying and having that ten pound weight limit, um I think I think it could hurt him pretty bad, but I just don't think it sh they should even consider it. There's not even a title on the line, so it's like if I was if it was me I would I I wouldn't have it now. I mean what what obviously when Amir fought in Birmingham he had to strip down to make the weight uh, a way in. Do you think it would have been better just to make a like a one fifty like a catch weight? Yeah, I think it would have suited Brooke more though. But I think Khan's looking obviously for every advantage possible. As if I was obviously if I was Brooke, I'd be wanting to do the one fifty. I'd be I'd be happy with that. But if I was Khan, I'd be wanting to do the one four seven. Everyone's gonna everyone's gonna look for every advantage possible. So. Um, yeah, I think they just need to just need to get it done. He's agreed to come down to one four seven, so to get he'll get down to one four seven, and they just need to um, scrap that ten pound rehydration. And we've also recently saw Callum Smith win the World Boxing Super Series, defeating George Groves. What were your thoughts on that, and how good is Callum? Because I know he's someone who you've seen box closely. I was buzzing for Callum Smith, like. I, I'm telling you, I was really happy for him. Um, you know, like I spoke to my brother the next day, and, and he said to me, he goes, "You know that feeling I get when you've like defended the title, and you, and I wake up the next morning, I'm, I'm, I'm buzzing." He goes, "That's how I felt with it, with Callum." Like he goes, like, because obviously if you've known him for a long time and gone on, been on the squads together and things like that, and you know how much of a, a good guy he is, and you know, he's very, he's very, he's a humble guy, clean-hearted, so. Um, you want to see, we always wanted to see him do well and we wanted to see him win and um, yeah that's what he done and he done it in, in some style um, now it's himself on the big stage and he's a superstar now is he is he the number one super middleweight in that division in your opinion most definitely yeah you have to be the BBA the BBC ring magazine champion if you're not number one if somebody's telling you you're not number one in the division then <laughs> you know they need to go. They, they don't know shit about boxing. <laughs> you just mentioned, you know, you was buzzing for him. Uh, sorry, uh, Gamal was like buzzing for you when you went out, and you was buzzing for Callum. I've seen a few things over social media where people say, you know, they'd love to see yourself, Gamal, Galal be for Birmingham, what the Smith brothers have been for Liverpool. Mm. Do you feel like you guys can be that for for the city, and you can take the boxing in the city to a new level? Yeah, most definitely. Um, so. We, we we work hard. We you know we 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 get some good results in boxing. So um, yeah, I think on, on on boxing terms in Birmingham, I think you know, I think we separate ourselves. So um, and that's no disrespect to any any other fighters because Birmingham got some really good fighters. But you know, Galal on it on what he does with, in the WSB one Commonwealth Games and things like that. It's just like he's going from strength to strength and. Gamal on the combat trail with two good wins and and obviously me as a world champion so I think um, I think we do good.
good for Birmingham boxing, which is a bit. Um, it's, we, we, I sometimes don't. I don't think we get the recognition we deserve, but that's boxing. Um, that's that's sometimes just sport in general. But we just keep doing our thing and um, just keep be, trying to be successful and just staying humble. I mean, with the city having a world champion in yourself, Gamal, a highly rated, I don't know whether prospect's the right word, but he's highly rated with regards to where he can go with his career, and Galal obviously with GB. Is it surprising that you haven't had not just a recognition, but you aren't necessarily looked upon in the next bracket, and what would it take for the city to really take off with boxing and to get maybe one or two shows here every year, while that Newcastle have had uh, this past weekend? Um, I don't know, it's, just, it's a bit of a weird one. I just think that boxing's always been a hard sell in Birmingham, um, no matter what, so I just think it's just the way it, just the way it is, but um, it's not really, you know, it doesn't bother me as, as, as much as what you'd think it would, obviously because like, I'm world champion, I've, had, I've made my first defence in Birmingham, it was great. Um, I'm, I've defended my, my world title in Principality Stadium in Cardiff and in the US. And obviously, you know, I'm fighting in Monaco next month and then I'm going to probably fight two or three times next year in, in the States. So, but getting the back in the Birmingham boxing isn't really a big thing for me now. So, um, just look to keep building, getting some big fights, unify the division and take it from there. But, um, you know, I can't complain with life. Life's been good. life's been good to me. I'm enjoying life, so you know, um, boxing's boxing's changed my life, and boxing's done some big things for me.